Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, my name is Ron and today was supposed to be a repotting video or actually a transplant video. I had made some cuttings of some of my plants a few weeks ago and I was supposed to transplant them from water into soil. And I was gonna film it too, but I realized that some of my plants are not doing well. So as you can see, I've started cleaning out that bottom shelf because I realized that there are spider mites and thrips. So my last video, I talked about my top five struggling plants. Well, if I had the time, it would have been like a top 10 plant, struggling plant video um, because I ended up finding more spider mites on more plants. Let me just show you what I've been up to so far. Okay, so if you recall in any of my videos, I've had some plants sitting at the bottom shelf and the middle shelf there. But at the bottom shelf, these are all of the plants that live there. And where did that plumeria go? Oh yeah, these two plumerias are the biggest thrips magnet. In my last video, I talked about like these plants having aphids. Well, they were, are actually thrips because the way I know that it's thrips is because on these yellow sticky traps. So these are put up mainly for fungus gnats, but I realized there's another type of bug on there. As you can see, the difference between the fungus gnat and this tiny bug is quite big, right? So these tiny little they look very tiny and skinny. Those are thrips, okay? Aphids, I think, are more like circular and round in shape. But thrips, if you have a thrips infection, infection? Yeah, if you have a thrust, a thrips infestation, it's really bad because you might be wondering how those thrips got onto the yellow sticky traps in the first place, right? Well, thrips, unlike aphids, I think, well, maybe certain types of aphids. Thrips fly, so if you have thrips on one plant, chances are you have thrips on multiple plants. Luckily, in my case, at least the plants that I've looked at so far, the thrips have only been loving my plumeria trees for some reason. I don't know why. I haven't seen a single thrip, thrips. I think thrips with the S can be used for both singular and plural. I haven't seen a singular thrips on any other plant so far, but I have seen spider mites on more than a couple of plants. So yeah, these plants that were sitting down there, including my plumeria trees right here, I've already taken outside in the backyard to spray the heck down. That's probably the most effective way at like eradicating a pest infestation because you actually need a good amount of like water pressure to like knock those suckers down. And obviously you can't do that on like your more delicate plants with like really delicate and sensitive leaves. So be mindful of that when you're spraying your plants down. I'm about to go back outside because this Birkin, I thought it was doing okay, but check this out. It's very hard to see, but There is a webbing and the webbing is occurring where the leaf meets the petiole. I'm trying to bring it towards the light, but I have a white background, so it's hard to see. From a distance, you really are not able to tell until you actually get in there and then you can see the white webbing. But I know how this plant actually got the spider mites. I had a Calathea Makoyana, living right here, that I got from a friend. Eventually that, I don't know if, it, if the spider mites came from the store, probably because I don't think I had a spider mite infestation recently. That had a bunch of spider mites, so I, I treated it with this product right here. And it says it kills aphids, 
millibug scale spider mites and thrips. And I sprayed that plant like two to three times over the last two weeks. And the spider mites keep coming back. So I don't know how effective this product is with that. Um, it might be due to the fact that it's like a really old bottle. It's like two years old or something. I'm not gonna use that anymore. And today I just got fed up. So that's why I took the plants outside to give them a hose down. This plant is gonna be hosed down next. But before I do that, I just wanted to put these plants back onto the shelf. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so if you're wondering, this is my devil's backbone plant. Behind that is a type of Hawaiian bamboo orchid. That one actually had spider mites, which is crazy. How the heck can spider mites thrive on this plant? Well, there were spider mites on the middle sections of the leaves on the top. But there were also spider mites where like the leaves meet the main stem right there. That one I was not expecting to see any pest at all. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And then also this is my Oncidium tigroides. <laughs> is still trying to make a recovery. Back there is my Syndapsis trubii moonlight. It is recovering, but I didn't see any pest on that plant, so. And then this is my fishbone cactus has never really thrived for me at all ever since the day I got it because I keep cutting it back because the leaves would never really fill out because I think I'm not giving it enough light but I've got two grow lights up here and since then it did kind of start pushing out bigger leaves like this but before that all of the leaves would look like this right here not even this part like all skinny without the signature zigzag appearance. So I think that one is also making a comeback. So down here is kind of like my comeback shelf. And then this right here is my purple shamrock. This one has never stopped growing, but every now and then it would droop and then I would forget to water the plant because it loves water. It loves drinking water so fast that if I miss a watering by like two or three days, some of the leaves will just completely shrivel up. So it's funny because some days it appears full and then some days it appears quite bare from me plucking all of those dead leaves. But I think this is not bad actually. It's still somewhat full. I know this one can bounce back relatively quickly. Then up here, this plant also got hosed down. This is my Thanksgiving cactus which I think it's thriving for me now because this has always been a struggling plant of mine. This was living down here there, um, getting all of this artificial light. And I think it liked that. Now that it's thriving, I think I want to like move it from there because I want to showcase it a little bit higher on my shelf. Um, and I also want to like move plants around. So I think down here though, will still be like my like struggling plant-ish area. Oh, also, this is my Syngonium elbow, which I was gonna tackle today because one of the plants that I was supposed to repot today is one of my Syngonium elbows in another pot. And I was going to combine it with this pot because although, don't let this appearance fool you, even though this might look very full down here, it's actually quite bare near the pot. And I was gonna take the cuttings and the other plant and combine it into this pot so that it looks more full but that's gonna have to wait for another day holy cow i just realized this plant right here the leaf is so huge oh my god so this is my mother of thousands that was previously in another pot and <laughs> i never really like appreciated the plant because it always grow all of these babies and then drop them 
onto the shelf here and just create a huge mess. So I think last time I like just propagated it. Also, it like because it got so top heavy, it just drooped. So I cut that off and then propagated in here. And I think this stem with the big ass leaf right here is the mother stem. But then look at that. The leaf was always like at around this size, like the size of a quarter. But dang, this is the size of like half a dollar bill. Okay, so anyway, that's the current situation with my pest infestation. Um, I hope all my other plants are okay. Today is also a watering day, so I'm gonna water every single plant and then take a really good look at each plant's leaves to make sure there are no pests. But if there are any, I'll show you which plant is affected. Hopefully not though. So yeah, now I'm just gonna take this Birkin, this spider mite infested Birkin outside to get a really good hose down. Okay, here we are outside and it's so hot today. I think it's actually supposed to be 100 degrees. So you might be wondering, why don't you just put your plants that are infested outside? Well, if I do that within like 10 minutes, all of the leaves will burn. So that's the perk of living here in the desert. So this is what I've been doing. I have a hose right here and I'm putting it right in front of the gate so that everybody can see what the heck I'm doing. On my hose, I set it to the flat setting, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I suppose I could put it on like shower, but I feel like that one doesn't have enough water pressure. And like all the other ones have like a weird stream, I guess. So if I turn this on, you see how that has like a wide spread. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to kind of focus on like a horizontal direction so that, you know, I don't want to like spray the spider mites into the soil because they'll just come back up. So by doing it horizontally, I can like spray it out of the pot, if that makes sense. So. Kind of like that, but I'm also going to go and spray each leaf on the underside as well as the top side. And then also thoroughly like flushing out the soil to get rid of like any buildup and salts and minerals and stuff like that. So this is like a spa experience for this plant, a much needed spa experience. All done. Okay, back in the plant room. So the Birkin has been sitting on this like tray of pebbles, but I don't really, I stopped filling this up with water because I don't know, it's starting to look gross. And the plant has been growing fine without the extra water. So I think I'm just gonna put that plant back on the shelf in this saucer. There we go. So freshly, Hose down. Hopefully no more spider mites on that plant anymore. And also the last couple of waterings, I have like treated every single pot with liquid systemic. So the thing about liquid systemic 
or just systemic granules or systemic treatments in general is that you won't see results overnight. The way it works is the chemicals that are inside of that pesticide actually needs to be absorbed by the roots and then taken up through the plant stem and then through the leaves. So it's going to take some time for the plant to actually become like pest proof because those chemicals need to make their way into like the entire plant. So it also depends on how concentrated that chemical is in the solution that you're using. Obviously the higher the content, the faster it'll work. Theoretically, I don't know. I haven't really tested it. But according to the directions on this product that I have, it's better to be used as a preventative measure rather than being reactive. So you have to use it before you even see pests in order for this product to actually be completely effective. If you see a pest and then you use it, it's not gonna kill the pest right away. So I think if I had to guess, it should take like a month at least to like completely get rid of the pest problem. If you've already find pests and you wanna use systemic, go ahead and do that but also you have to physically remove the pests as much as you can. So it's like a two-step process because when you use a systemic and then you water it in, when it's completely dry afterwards, it won't like wash away because the chemicals are still being like distributed throughout the plant. So by the next watering, if you're like flushing out the soil with water, like I just did with the Birkin, the chemicals are still supposed to be inside of the plant working their way through. So it's not gonna like completely drain the chemicals because the chemicals are already introduced to the plant. So then over time, as the chemicals continue to be distributed throughout the plant, then it'll be pest proof, but it will take time. So by treating your plant with a systemic and then also like waiting for the plant to dry and then knocking those pests off physically with water, a water hose, you should be in a better state. So hopefully this method works. I will probably update you in a couple of weeks or so to see how well this method is working. Um, hopefully I won't see any spider mites and thrips anymore on my plumeria and birkin. Hopefully there are no other pests on my other plants. But yeah, let's continue with the plant chores. I think what I'm gonna do next is like wipe off all the shelves, which means I'm gonna have to like move all of my plants. I might do some reorganizing of some plants as well, depending on how I feel. All right, well, I think that's about it for this video, guys. I've watered all of the plants that are outside of my Millsville cabinet. And from like that quick inspection, I think really it was just those three plumerias with the thrips. And then that one Birkin, and then also the pink syngonium with the spider mites. I hope that's it. If I didn't catch the other plants with pests, hopefully there aren't any more. I hope the um, systemic watering that I did a couple weeks ago, I hope that takes care of the problem. So I'm crossing my fingers on that. 
but overall I think the health of my plants seem to be in good shape um, I haven't really looked at my Millsville cabinet plants but I think they all seem to be in good shape as well well this took a lot more time than I expected now I'm gonna have to hose down that one last plumeria and the pink syngonium and then I'm gonna go eat some lunch because I am starving Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet already, plant scribe. Oh, also stick around for the next video that I'm going to be uploading. Um, I'm going to be transplanting my philodendron. Uh, what are their names again? Philodendron varicosum, philodendron mame silver. There's a couple of syngonium elbow cuttings in there. And the fourth one, I'm drawing a blank. Okay, that's what it's called. Philodendron melanochrysum. So those floor plant, floor, four plants I'm going to be transplanting from water. Quick sneak peek. Look at those roots. Kind of. But yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.